Okay, everybody, welcome to the next episode of Real Talk. I'm here with Miss Parsons. She is a world champion power lifter, also a teacher of mine from high school. Was it French? French yeah, or French. and for Z maybe? I yeah, don't know. I think it was French. I wasn't sure if it was French or German. I don't want to mess it up, but here we are anyways. Yeah, so a teacher in high school, um, an incredible story with powerlifting. I'm really excited for her to tell you know, how she got to that point. Um, so I guess we'll open it up right now with you know, what would be the thing that you think got you into powerlifting in the first place? It was uh, high school teachers, connections, networking. Um, I, uh, we had to start doing weights um, in grade nine for our other teams, basketball, volleyball. Just uh, at that time in the mid 70s, the big um, drive was to get in, into the weight rooms because mm -hmm. they were finding that the US athletes were so much stronger and better because they had facilities that where they could strengthen yep. and so there was a big push and so the managers for our basketball team volleyball teams would make sure they checked off if we went to the weight rooms um, either after school or at lunchtime mm -hmm. so it was part of the um, training for our high school teams back then I found that I was better than a lot of the girls, stronger than a lot of, of the girls. So in grade 10, a friend of mine and I started going down to the weight room and that's that's the time where mm -hmm. the weight room was in the dungeon. Oh, no yeah. no insulation. Not it big, was, shiny, beautiful buildings. No, like it was just a gunji, a one room, a cinder block place, one universal machine, a couple of dumbbells and that was it. Sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we went there during our lunch periods and uh, you know, lunch was at that time 38 minutes and we, um, we trained and three times a week, uh, grade 10 to grade 13. And then um, I developed such uh, great strength and um, a lot of power physique, My, uh, it changed me completely. Wow. Um, I was able to jump higher than most five foot uh, athletes. Yeah. And I yeah. was able to smash harder and it was just uh, phenomenal right so um, university I made the B team in volleyball at Queens but uh, being a, an athlete a top athlete at coming out of house high school it was kind of um, really disappointing sitting mm -hmm. on the bench and being uh, you know not played as much right, right so so then I kept weight training and then after first year university I went to uh, visit Mrs. McDonald, who was my French teacher. Cool. And uh, at her home to return some books that I had borrowed. And her husband came home and uh, he knew I had weight trained. Uh, I was weight training and he mm -hmm. says, you're still weight training? And I said, yes. Well, he says, a lot of women are getting into powerlifting. In fact, he said, in the States, we had the first um, uh, Women's World Powerlifting Championships uh, a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, well, that seems interesting. I had always thought of weight training as a means to something better, for yeah. an improvement for myself, for my other sports. I never thought of it as the um, uh, opportunity to kind of develop yeah. and, and uh, see how far I could go and, and compete in it. So he said, why don't you come to my, my gym in Brantford and try it out? I did, and uh, I was disappointed. He was excited because he said, you just realized you bench pressed the Canadian record for your weight category. I was disappointed because I was only doing 120 at that point. Yeah. Because I had only worked out with the universal machines, nothing free weights. And he said, oh my God, you know, you've just, um, you've just benched the Canadian record for the 52 kilogram class. And um, I think something went off and you're thinking, Okay, if I can do that mm -hmm. with no training in free weights, he, he taught me how to do the technique uh, just, uh, you know, moments before I, I, I tried my max. And uh, I realized then that, oh my gosh, maybe this is an opportunity for me wow. to take it one step beyond and to compete in something that I never thought was possible, especially for a woman. Jeez. Yeah. Which is so awesome from story. So from then, he wrote out a program for me. Um, I went back to Queens the next year. I, I, I went down to the weight room and I had a different purpose, a goal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, uh, I followed his routine, his, 
there's a recommendations. We'd be on the phone three months later. I went into my first competition. Yeah. Um, and uh, just because I needed to be in a competition before going to the Canadians. Five, six months after that, I went to the Canadian Championships. I won that. Mm -hmm. And then three months beyond that, I went to my first World Championships in Hawaii. Yeah. And I came third. So it was, it was just wow. because I had a lot of training background. Because in that first year um, uh, of powerlifting, I had the basic strength is I was perfecting my technique. And so people were amazed that mm -hmm. I did it so quickly, but um, they don't realize that I had had five years um, of training behind me before I got into the powerlifting. So, so it means of, um, I guess, supplementation and yeah, let's start with that. Let's just start with supplementation. What advice would you give to people starting off in powerlifting or even, I mean, not amateurs, even professional powerlifters about uh, nutrition and supplementation to maximize the results? We were never, I was never into supplementation. I, mm -hmm. I hated taking pills, any kind of supplements or, yeah. you know, Tylenols, headaches. I, I, it was not um, something that um, I enjoyed doing. So to me, um, I went through my training mm -hmm. blindly and based on what was what naturally I was eating and how I was training, mm -hmm. trying to maximize it. But what would I give? Uh, I would just say eat natural, eat yeah. good, wholesome foods, get enough rest, know your body, listen to your body. If you're not, if you're lacking in certain, uh, you know, minerals, vitamins, mm -hmm. then yeah, get get yourself tested out and 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 see if you need something. But um, it, it was later on in my career when I realized I was anemic. You know, I, I, being from Europe, I have thalassemia, which is a red, a low red blood count. Okay. So, and, and this was into, you know, the last few years of, uh, of training when I realized, oh my gosh, I, I, so I had to eat, start eating more, um, red meat, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then making, uh, taking a, an iron supplement that, that was it, believe it or not. Wow. And a lot of people don't believe that, but we, we were always told that Unless you're a bodybuilder, unless you're working out, you know, two, three times a day, you don't need the extra protein because it just, uh, you know, you only need a, a certain percentage, 10%, mm -hmm. I think it was. A, and the rest of it, if what you, your body doesn't need, just gets expelled anyways. So I'm thinking, why waste my money on yeah. the extra stuff when I don't need it? Uh, being a female, for me, it was the right thing. For a male, I, I don't know, I can't say. Fair it's enough. just that when students ask me, my, my lifters ask me, I said, you don't need it. You don't need to be spending m that much um, money on that. It is expensive, that. yeah. It is expensive. I'll give you that. And I keep thinking, if you were to um, eat properly and eat more, um, and if you can afford it, then, you know, and train, you know, smart, mm -hmm. then, um, you know, and give it time, then you will uh, grow. Right. You will develop. It's just that that time thing is, is what uh, young athletes yeah uh, that's the hard to part. invest in. That's you know? the hard part. So patience. You know, to be to be honest, right now I'm at about seven months in not missing any lifts, and this is probably the longest I've ever fully committed and mm -hmm. not you Good. know got lazy. Good. Right? Good. I had a six month run right before going to MAC football where I just didn't want to get beat up my first year, yeah. so I put on. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as the season started, I trailed off, and I've always kind of got to a six-month point and then fallen off, because I just feel good, and then you lose it, right? And you, you lose, lose your bases. It, yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to stick to it now, so that's just, I feel like the whole time commitment, I can totally relate to it, and I'm trying my, like if I miss one lift, I go insane right now, because I know mm -hmm. where that, it's a cascading effect. Yeah. All of a sudden you start missing a bunch of things. Um, one thing I really wanted to ask you, and I'm interested about this, is what sort of, uh, skills did you learn from powerlifting that you think are transferable to the rest of your life? Um, I think uh, setting goals, mm -hmm. short-term and long-term goals is vital. Um, believing in myself. At first I was a shy, um, shy person, you know, I was hitting the books. I, um, mm. It kind of opened up my uh, confidence level and you need that once you taste a little bit of success and you realize Oh, I can do this then the belief in yourself mm -hmm. is very um, uh, very important mm. uh, I needed my coach mm. uh, my 
uh, Norm Macdonald, my French teacher's husband. Okay. He he instilled that confidence and more belief in at the beginning in my abilities mm -hmm. um, and in my success than I did at first. And that slowly, as I was able to see, he's right. I, I do have a lot of talents. I do have um, the strength that's needed and, and the perseverance mm -hmm. and, and what it takes to be number one. And with that belief and that confidence, um, I, you know, I, I internalized that. And, and that's what I think um, translate in, translates into the rest of your life. Whether you're going into the business mm -hmm. world, whatever, next steps in life, that confidence, the belief, the setting goals, and the you know working hard. It's it's just wow. working hard to get there, and that's what it taught me. So. See, that's why I think I I've taken lifting so much more seriously this time. It's not because I want to be the biggest guy. I mean, I would like to be huge, but but it's more about um, I feel better as an individual when I can commit to something and then build it slowly, and then I feel like. If I can commit to this, then I prove to myself that I follow through with my commitments, and then that skill set transfers into building clientele, transfers exactly. into staying healthy, yes. and building new relationships. And, and if I can't even take care of my own body that goes with me everywhere I go, you know, then I lose confidence in my ability to take care of other people and things like that, right? So that's my rationale. Mm -hmm. there, of course, perfect. there's an aesthetic reason to it, like I want to look good. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Who doesn't want to look good? Definitely. But, yeah. But there is there really is a psychological aspect to it for me yeah. at least as well. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's the transferring of, of success from one area to another. It's you mm -hmm. know you have all those building blocks and then it goes with you wherever you go mm -hmm. once you've mm -hmm. accepted those. Yeah. So what's next for you then? You know what's the where's your life going next? Is it traveling? Is it you want well, to help other people with powerlifting? Um, I've always felt that because powerlifting. Uh, had so many positives for me mm -hmm. that um, I always wanted to give back because everything that people did for me mm -hmm. it was on a volunteer basis I never paid anybody my coach went to Australia with me he went to um, Los Angeles went to the world's and it was all on a volunteer basis mm -hmm. people that would run competitions for us so that we can get to those levels it was all volunteer work so early on in my career um, once I was done with the lifting I was the, uh, I got involved with the um, organization, so I was the Ontario Powerlifting Association president at that, mm -hmm. you know, way back. Uh, I was a, a referee, so I would be called on, you know, to referee other competitions later on. And then, um, then life got busy with children and, and uh, you know, their lives as well. And then I was able to come back to powerlifting at Glenview and uh, started a, a club there. Yeah. And uh, there was a need. Others were starting to do the same thing um, around the, the uh, province and around our Waterloo County. And um, that's when I went, you know, full, full tilt on, uh, you know, coaching and trying to improve others. And um, I think uh, we were known at one point as one of the best high school um, uh, powerlifting teams yeah. around. And you must have felt really nice about that. It was. It, yeah. uh, you know, to have such good kids who were committed and um, I made a difference to their lives mm -hmm. and their futures, uh, it's always a good feeling. So that to me was the biggest reward. Giving back uh, to the sport, uh, you know, f for what it had given me. So that's, uh, yeah, a very, mm -hmm. very um, encouraging, rewarding. So now that I'm retired, I still go back in there. Uh, one, one day a week, I try anyways, uh, and, um, um, help out train whoever wants to in the weight room um because i think there's a need mm -hmm. for certain type of students who want to work individually rather than a team yeah. who want to um get personal bests and personal satisfaction out of doing something and that's mm -hmm. what i've noticed a lot of my power lifters have said afterward i love this sport because it's not a cutthroat type of of sport it's you're working towards a personal best of yeah, each competition cool. and then you're kind of gauging what everybody else is doing mm -hmm. and um, seeing where you fit in and yes there is room for improvement or I can do this better mm -hmm. and it kind of it's a very uh, good learning point for them okay yeah. um, so I think we only have about a minute or two left okay goes by quick see like I said um, so I think people will know maybe Miss Parsons the 
power lifter, but what would you like people to know about you that you think maybe they don't know outside of power lifting? Maybe as a mother, you know, as, as a friend, as an individual, you know, what is it that they don't know about you that you think? Um, I have a lot of passions and interests like gardening, mm. um, cooking. Um, I'm, I, I'm a nurturer, okay. so I, I, I enjoy helping people. And um, at this point, I'm now um, a caregiver mm -hmm. uh, to my uh, I was to my parents and uh, my, my giving help to my sister, who's also taking care of them, mm -hmm. and um, being there for my children. They're young men now, but they're just starting their career, so just being there for them. I would say right now for me, uh, it's important to have a balance of uh, my mental health. Um, mm -hmm balancing my mental health and my responsibilities to myself, wow. to my family, and to anybody that is interested in, um, you know, experiencing some of my passions, whether they're powerlifting or mm -hmm. gardening, uh, cooking, traveling. We love to travel, so this has been an opportunity to do more traveling now. Wow. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, you're welcome. I really appreciate it, Ms. Parsons. No problem. Great. My pleasure. Great. Good you. to see you again. Perfect. <laughs> Went by quick, eh? Yeah, it's very quick. It's a blur.